Moving on to question 15, it says uh, the graphs of the equations y equals 2x minus 7 and y minus kx equals 7 are parallel when, uh, when k equals. Well, lines are uh, parallel when they have the same slope. Like if I make y equals uh, 2x plus 5, looks something like that y equals 2x minus 1 has y-intercept of 1 looks something like that and those things would be parallel so two lines are parallel when they have the same slope well the slope of the line that's the solution set of this equation is a slope of 2 because the number in front of the x is the slope so then the question is uh, if I rearrange this y equals minus kx uh, equals y minus kx equals 7 by adding kx to both sides I get y equals kx plus 7 so for them to be parallel the k has to be 2 okay. next question is question number 16 and it says which, uh, which verbal expression is represented by one half times parentheses n minus 3. You can push pause on your uh, or, or click on the YouTube screen to pause it to try to answer this question. Well this question, uh, th th these choices all sound very similar so that's why this is a tricky question. Half n decreased by 3 is 1 half n and then decrease as minus 3. Half of n subtracted from 3 this is the most common like wrong answer because this one is actually 3 minus n even though the word even though the n is first and subtracted from 3 is there it's it's actually 3 minus n the difference of 1 half n and 3 I think is also 1 half uh, n minus 3 whereas half the difference of n and 3 is 1 half the difference uh, half of and the difference of n and 3 is n minus 3. So the answer is choice 4. Moving on to number 17. Freshman class held a canned food drive for 12 weeks. The results are summarized in this table below. Which number represents the second quartile of the number of cans of food collected? You can take a minute, push pause, or click on the screen. Okay, assuming you've answered it or you're moving on. Um, the way you do these quartiles, first quartile, second quartile, third quartile, fourth quartile, is um, to arrange the numbers in order from, from small to big, and then we'll, we'll see what the median is of the numbers. So the smallest number on this uh, list looks like 20, and the next smallest number looks like 23, and then 28. And then 32. Here are the rest of them. So as you notice, there's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, 12 numbers. So uh, if you cut this list in half, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the, um, the median is the, um, is the second quartile. Well, there are two numbers in the middle now because there's an even number of numbers. So you take the average of those two, and uh, 35 plus 45 is 80 divided by 2 is uh, 40, which is choice number 3. So the second quartile is another word for the median. If they wanted to know the first quartile, you'd have to take the median of this first half, and the third quartile would be the median of this second half. Moving on to question number 18. They'd like to know which expression represents negative uh, 14a squared c to the eighth over 7a cubed c squared in simplest form. Push pause to answer the question yourself. Okay. So the main rule here, there's two rules of exponents that are very important. And one of them is that if you have like x squared times x to the fifth, that becomes x to the seventh because this would be x times x and this would be five more x's and together they would become seven x's. Dividing exponents 
you do by subtracting the, the bottom exponent from the top exponent. So over here, um, c to the eighth over c squared, I can uh, reduce that by getting rid of the c squared and turning c to the eighth into c to the sixth. Now, if the bigger exponent is on, is on the bottom, like if I had x to the second over x to the fifth, you could subtract and get x to the negative three, or you could do it the other way. You can sort of make, uh, you can essentially you're dividing top and bottom by x squared, so this would become one, and this would become x cubed. So you could think of it as you, you subtract the smaller number from the bigger one and the smaller exponent sort of goes away. So in this case, a squared over a to the third, the a squared kind of goes away, and the a to the third becomes a to the first. And negative 14 over 7, that you just reduce the regular way, it becomes 2. So all that remains is the negative, the 2, the c to the 6, and the a to the first on the bottom. Answer to 18 is choice 4. Question 19. This question, which value of x is the solution of x over 3 plus x plus 1 over 2 equals x? You could just test every number, all four choices, and see which one works. But what if this was a question on a part 2 or 3 or 4? I'll show you the official way to do this question. When you add fractions, like 2 thirds plus 1 half, you do that by making a common denominator which is the least common multiple of the two numbers. In this case, it would be 6. 3 times 2 is 6, so you do 2 times 2 to get an equivalent fraction of 4 over 6. 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times 3 is 3. Well, the same thing happens with fractions. The common denominator is going to be, uh, is going to be 6. So I'm going to get 6 here and 6 there. x over 3, when you multiply the bottom by 2, you have to multiply the top by 2 to get 2x. This, you have to multiply top and bottom by 3. It becomes 3 times x plus 1, which becomes 3x plus 3. That's going to equal x. When you combine those two fractions, you get 5x plus 3 over 6 equals x. I like to here cross multiply. So I get 5x plus 3 equals 6x. And then when I subtract 5x from both sides, I get x equals 3, which is the answer to number 19. Moving on to number 20. When 36 is subtracted from the square of a number, the result is 5 times the number. What is the positive solution? You could also test the four choices to see which one would work, but I'm going to do it with algebra. Um, 36 is subtracted from the square of the number, so this, this, the number is x. So 36 is subtracted from, so it's x squared minus 36, not 36 minus x squared. The result is 5 times the number. Now this is a quadratic equation. You actually could do this one by plugging in the four answer choices, but imagining that we didn't have the choices on a different part, uh, the method would be to subtract 5x from both sides. I get x squared minus 5x minus 36 equals 0. Now the way to answer this question is to factor. And factoring is when you figure out what two things multiply to become x squared minus 5x minus 36. Well, the, uh, you need an x and an x to become x squared when you do FOIL. Now we need to find two numbers that multiply to give us negative 36 and add to give us negative 5. Those two numbers are negative 9 and positive 4. Now, um, if x minus 9 times x plus 4 equals 0, one of them has to be 0. So either x minus 9 is 0 and x is 9, or x plus 4 is 0 and x is negative 4. Um, choice 1 is, is one of the possible answers. Well, this 9 is the answer to this question.